Hello friends and texture junkies. I promised to do a video making these charms and these are not using materials that you think but something new to you probably. There are not a lot of videos using mica tile. Mica tile is a natural substance. It's like a stone and it's absolutely splittable with your finger. You can make it as thin as you want. This is how it comes. This is how you find it in the earth. And it'll come in big rocks and you just split it. Now I purchased this. There's only one company that I've found that actually sells these. However, it is. it doesn't conduct heat. So it's used in your microwave to keep the heat from escaping. So you can go to Amazon and buy one inch mica tiles and they're already cut in squares which is like the perfect size for what we're doing here today um, but I wanted some more natural shapes and some larger shapes so I'm gonna share with you my process here and what I did I do have some other things coming to do the edges with some copper tape because I want to use some transparencies which melt with the heat tool that I used to edge these ones. So we didn't want that, um, but it, it won't be here in the mail until next week. Anyway, let's get started. And I'm gonna do a little soul spilling while we, while we do this. Let me share with you the tiles we have, this uneven piece. And I used the tile in its natural form. It was already in this shape. So I went with that. I painted on it. It's got a jelly print on the back. On both, and it's printed on both sides. The back is waxed, but you could completely seal it so you can't get moisture in if you hang it from a necklace. They can be put on your rear view mirror. They can hang on a hook somewhere on your wall to inspire you, or you could wear them so this is wearable art. You can make them any size and shape that you'd like, which is really fun because, you know, I, I picture this on a really long cord. Um, wearing a sweater, put it over my neck, um, like a long necklace. So I thought that was really fun. These are actually um, uh, resin pieces that I made and painted, waxed, you know, used different ways to color them. I even gold foiled one of them. Let's see where to go. Put gold foil on them. You lose some of the detail when you do that, um, which is fine. I then waxed it with a kind of antique colored wax. And when I say wax, I mean uh, the home decor wax for furniture, but you could use anything really. Just a way to seal it and antique it. So I have all these resin pieces here and you wouldn't have to have like a 3D face. You could have anything you wanted. Um, you can even go so far as uh, things you found, broken jewelry, um, rusty washers from your um, uh, husband's toolbox, uh, anything you can think of. And I think of anything as a bead or a charm. If I like it and I would want to wear it or make something weird out of it, it's, it's a charm to me, you know. Like these didn't have a hole in them, although it could have been drilled. However, you know, using some E6000 really does the trick. So, like I have one drying up here with the E6000, and I did a different sort of um, chain on the bottom to hang, and it's shaped like a tag. And, of course, I'll clean up any glue strings or whatever from the E6000. So I'm going to put that back. So I've collected bits of jewelry and findings and because I make a lot of mixed media assemblage and I used to have a jewelry bobble bar where I would make these charms and people would build their own necklace at craft fairs. So that's a thing. Um, mica tile comes in many, many, many colors. You can split it as thin as you want. You can stamp on it. You can use a punch on it. Uh, although it has to be pretty thin for you to use a punch on it. Uh, your crocodile will poke a hole in it so that you can put a, uh, an eye in it, but it's very strong. Um, you cut it with a uh, razor blade or your craft knife, 
um, it might dull up a cutter and, uh, you know, that kind of cutter. Um, here's one that I, it's really thin and I punched a hole. I love all these organic lines that are in, in the stone as well. I, and some of them have them, some of them don't. You see all the different colors here. That one is remarkable, isn't it? It's pretty thick too. Um, so I'm going to put this aside, show you the rundown of how I made this. And we're going to do a little soul spilling, too. I like some soul spilling. So I'm not really good at the whole housekeeping bit. Like, <laughs> like asking you to subscribe and like and share and all of that. I forget, honestly. And that doesn't mean I don't want you on my journey with me. Because I definitely do. I just hope that whatever you get out of what whatever video you're watching from me, you feel inspired. You feel like you want to try new things and recycle and upcycle things. So whatever you take away from this, it could be just it sparked an idea. Maybe you're not making this project, but maybe you have ideas for other projects and you have an aha moment. And I get those from watching other videos, even if it's not something that I'm going to be doing that project. It's just the aha that I'm looking for and feeling inspired. So I will tell you, you can use old jewelry. You can use broken jewelry. You can use loads of beads. Um, it's a little fussy to sit and do all of the stuff with the jump ring and the rings and the eye, eye pins and all that. But I recommend the broken jewelry that has, like this was from a rosary. I've got a couple of them here. Um, but I break it into pieces and it's already made for me. I really like that. And I've used these on so many different projects over the years. That's just, oh, I have glue and paint all over me. That's just, you know, stuff I save. I can't help it. Um, these kind of pieces where they have, they were the end of the necklace and, and it's old. They already have the holes. So you could technically hang three things from that or... Put it this way on your piece and just use the two there's just if you start turning things over turning it upside down flipping it on its head and looking at it in a different way you'll come up with unusual and new things and i like that there's a really sparkly heavy piece and there were several of these on i don't even remember what it was but boy it's magnificent it really is um i have a lot of antique jewelry lots and lots and sometimes I don't know what's real and what's fake. And because it's old and there's a lot of costume jewelry in there. And this, I took off of a clip earring and then I regretted it because it probably had the information whether or not any of that was real. Um, you know, like real gold or whatever. But it's never tarnished and I'm starting to wonder. <laughs> I have a lot of stuff like that. I have jars of pearls. Um, off of old pearl necklaces, and some of them are real. Some of them are are good fakes. Um, I just save things like that, and then I add new things to it, and it's just really fun to mix your metals, mix the look of your art piece, and these are little art pieces. So let's talk about this charm here. I was saying, I'm not good at asking for the thumbs up, the like, all of that stuff, but I hope that you want to join me on this journey and that you'll hit that bell so that you're notified when I have another project to share and pro uh, process even, you know, so that you can get inspired and come along with me. Um, I promise not to take up too much of your time. I'll try to make them quick videos. I do have a live, but I'm really working with the time because I want to be able to include our Australian um, and uh, UK friends or anywhere in the world, really. But we do have those, and I would love it if you um, uh, kept an eye out for that because that's an evolving, changing thing, and it will only be twice a month. I think that's good because then I have time to work on other larger projects in between. Please go back and look at any of the videos if you're new uh, that you see in my lists because there's such a variety of, of projects that you never know what you're going to find. So give it a look-see. So what I did here, you can use 
any of your gel prints. You can use tissue paper. You can use anything that you think is pretty where you find a little moment in there. Let's, uh, let's play with that one for a second. This is a scrap from something I just did. There's a gel print too. So perhaps I have this on one side and this on the other. And what I did here was take this mica tile. Let's find a piece that we like here. What did I do with that? I just set it aside. Yep, set it down here. Maybe I'll split another piece here. You can split it pretty thin, but the thinner it is, the weaker it gets. Maybe, maybe one with some of these marks, or let's see how that looks. Or one without marks, even. You could use acetate for this project. If you do not have mica tile, that is fine. But please note that you cannot use the heat tool for the edges if you do that. So you're going to want some sort of copper tape or something. Let's see if I can get my fingernail in here. Are you there? So my goal making videos is just to inspire and... For those who are feeling stuck or don't know what to do or, you know, those those are the, those are my people because that happens to all of us. Oh, here. I have more up here. Um, or people that want to try new things. I love trying new things. That's one of my favorite things to do. Look, that one's very clear. Let's use that one. Let's give that a split because it's pretty thick. So you could use mica tile on both sides. But I got to get a better thicker piece here. Look at that. Look how fun that is. I hope I'm not off camera. Look at that. Oh my goodness. See that? So then you can stamp on it and punch holes in it. You could carve a shape into it. Glue things to it, obviously. Um, it's really endless how you use this. And I love that it's natural and protects your piece so it, it also if you pick a darker one it'll look more antique so what I did here I chose a shape I stamped on it and then I painted on it and maybe I would in the on this case put paint on the inside I'm not sure um, I wouldn't want that to rub off so it's about sealing it really I think and that's a gel print under there That'll get some sort of a focal point, I think. I could even, I love mixing things. I could even take, where did that piece of jewelry go that I just had? The one with the yellow. I could even take, let's do this, something like this and put it there. And that creates such a mixed media piece. Or maybe something like that. I've got all kinds of weird things. I can use hard and soft and feminine and masculine and I just love mixing all of that up so let's take a piece of this let's put this on the back see that was just on scrap paper let's decide on our shape I want a shape so I'm going to now remember if you use a punch on it you could also run it through your Cricut but it might need a couple passes but if you're gonna do that um note that you know it could dull your blade a little bit let's get a ruler and a blade I have so much stuff on my desk right now it's just confusing and let's go with some sort of a weird organic hold that down organic sort of shape here so not square not diamond something fun do it any way you want, really. Cut a heart. Just, you know, you have to take a couple passes with this. Um, let's go this way. No, you hold still. Let's see if we can snap it at that point. So it's pretty strong, actually. Let's go this way. Use this as the top. It's really fun to work with, and I've been trying to come up with new ways to use it because it's really cool. It's not glass, it's stone, and that's just really neat. 
cut off that little bit right there. See if I can hold it down. You could probably tape it down when you go to cut it if you're worried about it slipping around. It's so hard to throw those little pieces away. So my husband and I go on walks and trips and, you know, we get out of the car, we walk around, we look or we go in the forest or we're on a trail and I look down and find weird things all the time. That's that's what I do. If I find trash, I take it home. That's that's my MO and uh, finding things to use in art. I have buckets of whoozy what's it's and, and that is actually what I call them. And it's a mix of weird things, old broken jewelry and rusty washers. And I went through those buckets to make this. Plus, I have many, many boxes of things like this to search through. Or I have an old sewing tin full of beads here. I have, you know, I have way more beads than that. But I just like making unusual things. It's fun for me. So here I am with my unusual shape. I might take a scissor. You can use your scissors, by the way, and just round out some of those little cornery bits. And I like that, although it might get covered. Um, and where's my paper? So now I want to, and I didn't use any glue on this um, except on the very, very edge because you don't want it to show. So I'm going to take some of this and decide where it goes. I kind of want that darker at the bottom if I use it. Ooh, that's pretty. It's a leaf. Mm, let's use those swirls. Okay, so I'm going to take a pencil. Where's my little woodless pencil? Trace around that. This is a gel print that I really like. The other thing I recommend is using colors that you wear or that are are in style or popular to wear if you're going to wear it, actually. Maybe if you're going to hang it up on a doorknob somewhere, use colors in your house. Can't see the line on this side. There we go. You could have this even if you like. If you're an even person, that is totally fine. So there we go. We have that. Now I want to cut one more piece for the back. Is this the one I was going to use? Where did the gold one go? Goodness me. So you could actually use tissue paper and sandwich it. You could use um, textures. I have these cards I just got and I thought it would be fun to use some of those with some uh, Tim Holtz paper dolls. Just, you know, make it interesting, fun. Your strips that we did in another video in uh, the strip tag, um, all of these would be the perfect place to go to to find your inspiration for the background on what you want to wear. Like that right there would be great. I don't know what I did with the. Oh, it's right here. I was working on these this morning. I wanted to film earlier, but I wanted to get the dangles on there. So it was kind of, you know, kind of late in the day now. So what that is, is coffee dyed cardstock with some tissue paper over it. And I just love it. So what I'm going to do is do this serendipitously. Lay it down. Place it out. And then after I get it all together, I will make sure my edges are right. Because there's another step to sealing this and to edging it. That eliminates the glue, really. Just got to get it in place. All right, so there's that. And we want to Put this in here and line it up. So I'm a little over there. Rather too big than too small to fit your piece. Organic, organic. Love those edges. Okay. 
I guess I could have cleaned my drop cloth before I started this video. Sorry about that. <laughs> I hope it's not distracting. Okay. So what I want to do now is get my, get the eye in place because that'll hold it together while I do the heat embossing bit. Um, so what I'm going to do is put a clip on it, make sure it's folding. And don't worry about those edges at this point. I'm going to use my crop a dial and the small one. Make sure it's lined up. Decide where I want it to hang from. And I noticed that I needed to get closer to the edges so that I could not have to make my own jump rings um, earlier. I had to do that because I, the ones I have here are not big enough. And I can't find my box of mixed sizes. So I'm going to get out an eyelet. And I don't have my crocodile set up for that right now. I'm not going to mess with it. It would take too long. I'm going to just do this. You're going to have to cover your ears. Here I am trying to be quiet. I'm just going to have to do it. Look at that. And it's held in place. Now I'm going to decide, do I put some in the bottom? Yes, of course. And notice I did all of them different. So let's talk about that for a second. This one I decided, I made these little pieces to go at the top, and then I think it's going to get like a velvet um, cord. These are real garnets. All of these little red pieces are, are real garnets from an antique necklace, which I thought was really special. Um, this one, I just hung one thing from the bottom, and that is a chunk of necklace with a charm, and it might get some more up here, but I'm not sure yet. This one, really special, I hung a chain, and I keep lengths of broken chain, so those were perfect for that, great way to use those up, and some charms and some pieces of old jewelry. So you can do it any way you want. Oh, here, and this one. This one, I didn't put a hole at the bottom, I just put one at the top and added the pieces at the top, probably real pearls. So this one, if I did it different again, whoops, I need that, don't I? Smaller. So this one, maybe I'll do that chain thing again. Nice and low on there. Make sure it's lined up. This holds it in place until you get to that embossing powder also. There we go. Gosh, I need a vacuum. I keep wiping, wiping little bits like this on the floor. Garbage. They just don't make it. No point. All right. Sorry about that. Cover your ears. Let's do that one more time. Cover those ears. Let's do that again. There we go. And there we have it. At this point, before I put the embossing powder on, I want to make sure that none of that white is showing, although I'm going to seal it with the heat embossing. So, I'm going to ink that up just to make sure it's covered and decide on a color here. And let's go 
just with a ground espresso. I just, it's paper under there and I need it to be covered. You could put a piece of, of the mica tile on the back as well. So I would cut it first and then split it with your finger to the thickness that you're after. And you'll end up with multiples of the same shape. It comes in some pretty fun shapes. You can buy it in tag shapes. I'll get the paperwork out and show you the company that makes it here in a minute. Got it. I saved it. It's hard to find. Not, not, not super simple to find. Um, because it's only one company. However, if you look in your uh, home repair section, you will find it. And it's cheap, too. Really cheap. So, covering all those edges so there's no white showing. And I don't mind that at all. I want it to have an organic sort of um, grungy feel. Let's see. Now, what I did with the heat embossing, I did uh, multiple dips. So I sat out. I'm not going to do that on camera because, you know, I already hammered. We don't need to use the heat tool, too. But what I did was use multiple sizes. Um, you don't have to. I just really wanted it thick around those edges. And this one is my party mix where I dump everything in. So it's that turquoise and gold. Um, this one is really thick. I went back like three times to do that and seal it. And at that point, you can also add a little glue if it didn't seal it completely because the edge is covered. So if, it's, if there's a gap at all, you can run a tiny little bit of glue in there. I just didn't want it to show through my um, mica tile. And this one I actually used a, a Nuvo mousse over, you could probably use stencil butter, uh, over a stencil um, to create some more interest. I love it. I even stamped on the back of that one. So if it gets turned around, it's really fun. Or you could wear both sides if you want. So all I did was dip this after the ink is dry, of course. Dip it in your embossing powder uh, or your embossing pad and then dip it in your embossing powder Heat it up. Do one side at a time. It doesn't conduct heat. You can hold it if you're not too close. Um, or you can use tweezers. I didn't want to scratch it up, so I just held it. Put that back. So then you can add any focal point you want. And I waited to do that until last so that I could clip it and have it dry like this guy right here. But this is where I got creative. And I'm going to share with you some of the creative things that you might use. You might have some old earrings and you only have one of. You might have some dyes that you really like. That one kind of matches. Um, you could also sandwich that in between. You might have some really fancy beads or some charms that you made. Or this broken necklace that has the hearts and you just use these pieces. I do recommend if you're not a jewelry maker, which I'm not, I mean, well, I am, but all of mine is kind of um, mixed media style and found object, but I do recommend one of these rings right here. Um, and most of the jewelry kits that you buy on Amazon will come with one. I had two at some point, but then you stick your piece in there, the, the edge of that in the ring, and you can open it up. And you close it in the very same way. I like circles. I have to think about circles. So let's do, let's close that up. And let's assume this is going to go on this one. You'll want to heat emboss before you add your jewelry, however. Just so you know, I would just get it ready. Do I want to take that whole piece? Let's take the whole piece. So you see where the split is right there. Give it a twist, take it off, 
do the twist back. And that is how that ring works. It's pretty awesome. Um, I have other old jewelry that I've collected. You can go to the secondhand store and um, buy jars of it, usually. Um, I've just collected all my life. These are swivels from um, fishing uh, tackle. Super cheap. You get a whole box of them. They're really interesting. They're fun. They uh, Maybe that's what I'll use on this one. Maybe that will be swivels. Probably put a gold edge on it. I love to mix the metal. You can use hardware like this. See that has a hole here and then it has those two pieces. So I could hang something from those if I want or I could hang it on its side. That would be kind of fun just to make it interesting. Make sure whatever you use won't snag though. That's that's the thing you want. Imagine wearing it with a sweater and having it snag. That would be really irritating. Here's a bigger swivel. I mean, why not? Or this kind that has this hook. Um, you could probably use, there's another little piece. You could probably use, um, oh, where was my train of thought there? Oh, uh, bulb pins. Um, but, and they would be removable and you could change it out. I just don't think it would be as appealing for me. And it might get caught. Um, you're going to want some eye pins if you do beads. Um, here's off of old antique jewelry, some little end pieces. And I absolutely love bits of chain like this that already have the wire because I can use it. Anything will do, really. Um, old beads. Here's a really cool piece that needs to go on one of these. It's like copper. Just uh, think outside the box. Come up with something something new. Go through your junk, find new things, and look at them in a different way. Um, if you need to use some E6000 to turn it into a charm, then by all means, do that. And I hope that you have fun and you try this project and it wasn't too confusing. Uh, please like, subscribe, and you can share on my Facebook page if you make some of these. Um, I'm working on a place to land um, currently uh, on Facebook for all of our members after we get more so that we can share what we're up to. And twice a month right now, um, we're doing little art classes in our little handmade art journal. So if you'd like to join us there, the videos are in the list and there will be more. Um, the first and third Saturday of the month is the current schedule, but um, that's about to change, and I'm not sure exactly when to help our Australian friends. Uh, we have a uh, Maker's Creative collab coming up, and I would love to have you in our hop, like, to watch. Um, so come uh, click on, well, hit the subscribe button, and there will be a link, and you'll know when that's about to happen. And my brain. I need more coffee. I hope that you had fun hanging out with me today and that you learned something or felt inspired and you have a magical day. Bye.